to bless and praise and honor your yes. name, Lord God, because of who you are, Father. Yes. So, Lord God, we ask you tonight, Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us to all truth, bring us to a completeness in you, Lord God. Open our eyes, Holy Spirit, that we may have a greater understanding and revelation of who you are. Allow us to hear you, Holy Spirit, by you opening our ears. Complete us in this word tonight, Lord God. Father God, I call myself pray, Lord God, that you may use me, Holy Spirit, that the way you see fit, Lord God. And Lord God, you would not just teach your people, but myself as well, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Question, I think I heard something. Um, I don't know, but I think when um, Elder Lisa was up here, she said something. She asked a question, I think. Do y'all remember what um, revolution meant? Completion. No, I thought I heard something. Bless him, Holy Ghost. I thought I heard you say, about, do you want a keychain or something? No. Do you want complete completion? Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, before we get started in the word tonight, I got to share something real briefly. About maybe three, probably three weeks ago. Um, I'm not going to give you the details, but I kind of give you an oversight of what, what took place. Um, I was going down to one of my job sites um, about two hours away, and I stopped at a truck stop. And the Lord had told me, He said, um, pick up some keychains. And He gave me two people's specific names on who to pick the keychains up for. And so, when I picked the keychains up, I immediately thought in my mind what one of them, one person's keychain is for. Mm -hmm. And so I, I gave him the keychain, and the thing that I thought it was supposed to be for did not happen at all. Okay. At all. Okay. However, mm -hmm. something else did happen, I'm not going to say what happened, but something else did happen mm -hmm. that fits the benefit of having a key check. Amen. 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 And so the Holy Spirit ministered something to me as an apostle, a prophet, whatever you want to look at it. But he says, so whenever I am ministering a word through you or to you about an individual, sometimes I will show you exactly what it is. Amen. What it's for. Amen. Sometimes I won't. I won't. However, that does not mean that you don't have to deliver the word or go through the process of what I'm telling you to say. Amen. So, in doing so, um, I noticed this particular certain type of keychain would constantly catch my eye. And so, the Lord kept ministering me. He said, I want you to pay attention. And when you see a name that you recognize that's in the ministry, and I tell you, 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 you get one for that person. Amen. And you tell everybody that's listening to you that you know what you're praying for. Yes. You know what you believe in God for. However, there are many different reasons why God would give us keys. Mm -hmm. Peter got the keys to the kingdom. But Peter did not want to obey the commandments that was given to him by the key giver. So therefore, the keys that Peter was given to him got taken away from him and handed to Paul. Amen? Amen. So whenever God has given us keys, that means he's given us greater responsibility. Yes. He's given us an assignment. Amen. He's given us access to something that we will otherwise did not have access to. Come on, man. He's allowing us to enter into places that we can either leave open yes. or, or, or lock up. Amen. 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 Or secure. Amen. So he, he's been instructing me, I don't know how long this is going to last, and no, this is not um, no trickery or nothing. I'm not even asking. I, don't, I never do anything and ask people for money. I don't do that. I don't play that type of game because I believe that the word of God is free. Amen. I believe that, um, yes, I do believe about sowing, reaping, and, and how you can um, sow a seed into a man or woman of God's life or ministry, and, and, and you will reap bountifully for what I believe those things. Amen. Amen. 
I just don't live a lifestyle of trying to gain from the kingdom of God happily. Okay. Nor do I always frown upon everyone that does it. I'm being brutally honest that sometimes I do frown upon it. But I don't always do it because I understand that you can't muzzle out the ox that's treading the corn. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And I understand that we got several different examples in the body of Christ in the Bible where the man of oh God spoke um, before speaking words in someone's life, um, um, like he told the little woman to, to fix mine first. Right. Um, and she did so in her, you know, her cruiser world did not stop. But that's something that I don't um, get myself involved in. I just simply obey God, hear his voice, and I do what he will also do. And I will say this, he told me to say this again. Do not make the mistake of just thinking because he gives you a key that you immediately know exactly what the purpose of that key is. Now, there are some of you who will know exactly what that is. Some of you, the Lord may have told you to walk forth in ministry at a certain level into a certain place, but you've been afraid to do so. So he's showing you by giving you the keys to certain things that look, you have full access to this area in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we go through the word tonight, the Lord has been showing me how we will, our spiritual eyes and our natural eyes, our natural understanding, our spiritual understanding will be open tonight in a greater capacity so we can begin to see why the Lord would call us to certain places, certain times, certain seasons, or certain moments in our life because God says to us, look, the time is now. Amen? Amen. 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 So, no further ado. Amen. Amen. Um, if your name's not called, that don't mean you're not going to be God did not overlook you. Amen. It just simply means um, I haven't put my eyes on him yet, or maybe he um, is still working with you or something. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Elder Lynn, I don't know what it's for, but you, you and God have a conversation. Amen? Amen. Elder Lisa? Amen. 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 Say this just because your name has not gotten called and didn't get a keychain does not maybe it could be I haven't seen it yet. Because I'm diligently looking. Amen. I go to several of these places that have these things and I'm I'm diligently seeking for the names Amen. that are among us. Amen. I don't know what you've been believing God for. And then at the same time, I don't know what spiritually God has set aside for you. Peter wasn't asking for keys that day he got the right answer. Amen. He just simply had the right answer about the Spirit of God because his hunger and thirst for the Spirit of God caused him to give the right answer Amen. which also in return caused him to receive keys. Amen. But again, he received the keys but he never used them. He received the keys, but he never ever used them. He had the keys of the kingdom. But he did not take the keys to unlock the, the ministry of Jesus to the Gentiles. And so we see Jesus taking that key personally from him and giving it to Paul. So you ask yourself a question, how many times have God visited you on the rooftop and told you to do something mm -hmm. that you don't think is a requirement? Mm -hmm. How many times did he come to you and tell you to feed my sheep, feed my lambs? He might even say, feed, feed, feed my, my lambs, sheep, sheep, sheep. He could have simply tried to say, be on time. Amen. He could have probably simply said, stop drinking. Amen. He could have probably simply said, you don't need that. He could have probably simply said, put your foot down. But because you don't understand the Holy Spirit, you walk in disobedience, don't even know it. Amen. You don't see, don't worry, don't worry. I, I didn't know I was going to say what I just said just now. But the Holy Spirit just assured me, He's going to teach it to us in the night of the Word. 
Because there are a lot of us who need a hole dug, but yet we've got the shovel, but we're leaning on the shovel, looking at the ground where we know, where we know we're supposed to be digging a hole at, asking God, when you going to hurry up come dig this hole for me? And you lean on the shovel. Chilling. <laughs> looking deep, looking profound, because you get up every morning at six on time and you come and lean on the shovel. Or you make it out there just enough in time. I, well, I'm here, but ain't no hole got dug yet. And you praying and, and praying and, and fasting and believing God. Oh, y'all can see me. I'm sorry. Y'all can see me. Believe in God for a hole to get dug, that God says, well, why would I give you a shovel and then turn around and dig the hole for you? Mm -hmm. Why would I do that? That's not how God works. He's not going to provide us with the necessary things we need then turn around and do it for us. That's, that's, you, 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 you study in the, you read about the wrong guy. That's not how he works. That's not his character. I am hot. Bless him. Lord Jesus. Okay. So, how many of you watching or in your building tonight ready to get to the next level in your life? Another way. How many of you are tired of where you currently are? Yes. And you're ready to cross over to the other side of the life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many of you, you guys included on Facebook, YouTube? You're at a place in your life where you know, hey, once I pass through this, I'm good. So you, you're willing to just pass through. You, 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 you know you don't like where you currently are, but you made your mind up in order to get to over there where I know it's better than here, I got to at least pass through something. But I'm willing to pass through whatever I have to pass through because I need to get to the other side yeah. of where I currently am. Yes, yes, amen, amen. I got to get to the other side of this thing. Yes, yes. The sad part about it is this. The children of Israel knew that where they currently was at was not where it was supposed to be at. But yet they lack the mindset. I'm not going to say they lack the ability. But they lack, lack L-A-C-K, lack the mindset of just simply choosing to cross over. Amen. They lack the, the mindset. They did not lack the ability. They lack the mindset. Okay? Simply say they lack they had the mindset. The mindset. They had all of the ability. They had all of the ability. And the potential. And the potential. To cross over. To cross over. The Jordan River. The Jordan River. And go. And go. Into the promised land. Into the promised land. However. However. They did not. They did not. Have. Have. The mental. The mental. Capacity. Capacity. To proceed. That they could go over. That they can go over. And that's most of us. It's one thing to have the keys. But if you never put the key in the ignition, you'll never crack the car. Amen. It's one thing to have the key, but if you never put it in the door, you'll never open the door to the house. Amen. It's one thing for the Spirit of God to have now anointed you. You, you went through the praying and the fasting. You got to say God has blessed you, but you, 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 you would not even go forward and accept your calling. Mm -hmm. 
You won't even do it. So many people in the body of Christ, God has, has told you, this year, I'm giving you this. But because of turmoil, setback, confusion, mishap, you've taken the vision or the thing that God has said he's going to give you and said, you know what? Maybe that's not for me. And you just let it, you just sit there. And you, and you know you have it. And you won't even walk in it because you lack the mental capacity to understand that the time is now. You like the ability. You don't like the ability. You have the ability to do it. You have the means. You just lack the mental capacity to understand that the time is now. Because a lot of folks get excited and, 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 and pumped up when they get, a, get something in the, you know, that, that, that's a tangible thing. Yeah. Like the key change you just got. You got excited, but what you going to do with it? Right. What I would do before I make any moves, God, right. why you give me this? What is this for? What am I to do with this, God? Now that starts communication with him. Now that starts the process that I can now learn of him to know what his plans are for my life. Amen? Amen. 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 Drinking alcohol will not send you to um, hell. You help out with that. Amen. Smoking weed, smoking cigarettes, smoking drugs, that ain't gonna send you to hell. Amen. It ain't going I promise you it won't. Jesus said it's not for a man puts in his body that the thousands of what comes out of him. So I'm giving you some scripture right quick. So he's quick looking at me with that tone of voice right now. <laughs> so therefore you have people in the body of Christ who they continue in things that they figure, well, if you don't minister about it, talk about it, you're judging me. No, 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 no. No, no, that's not the case. Not the case. I knew very well that I could drink Quavo. And God would use me and still let me preach. And he did. Yeah. Amen. Until he said, okay, son, where I'm taking you is where we can go. Now you can stay at this level, or you can put this grave on now and come to the next level. Because I need you to get across Jordan. You done dwell on this side of Jordan in your life long enough. On this side of Jordan, yeah, I was allowing you to, to, to drink the Jose Cuervo and act like a clown and do whatever, and I still use it because the gift has come from a mind or without repentance. But if you're trying to get to what I have planned for you, Cuervo got to go. And most people in the body of Christ do not have a true understanding of that. One of the most precious apostles in the Bible was Peter. I just lost my church. Just lost my church. Most folk didn't even know that. He was, he was precious. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break down these very simple things of how people was precious. The Lord crucified Jesus Christ himself. That's why I know. I, I was asking to God, how come you won't do so about this very simple? He said, shucks, my own apostle wouldn't even let me deal with him with it. So what do you think these jokers around you today going to do? Right. If my apostles who lay eyes on me, walk with me, talk with me, who I didn't keep them, keep them, struggle with racism, what makes you think that, that these guys today who never seen me going to allow me to heal their heart of racism? He said, I can. Right. But they're going to allow me to do it. Amen. So he gives Peter the keys to the kingdom. Peter's beef was when Jesus comes up in the vision, in the dream. He says, Lord, I'm not eating that. I'm a Jew. What's wrong with you? I'm not touching or eating nothing uncommon and unclean. Have right? you lost your mind? He said, Boy, I'm simply trying to show you something. I need you to go to Camille's house. This, yeah. man ain't, this man is not a Jew. He's a Gentile. Yeah. I, don't, I don't deal with him. What's wrong with you, God? Yeah. Yeah. Prejudice. His root is so so heavy in him, and I was not going this way. But his root is so heavy in him, even when the when God gives his keys to the one who used to kill Christians, and he shows up, he says, Okay, I got beef with you too now. Right. Yeah. We circumcise, you're gonna circumcise these men right now. 
Or y'all ain't saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Are you serious? That your root of racism is that, that heavy in you that you're going to now make up a requirement. Yeah, I know that you're going to under the law, and you're going to make a requirement. You, 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 you see the gift and the calling of God on these men. You see it. You, 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 you see them speaking in tongues. You see them casting out demons. You see them going, but yet you won't acknowledge the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you're in a place in your heart where you need to be dealt with. Yes. And God's going to deal with you, Peter. So it came a time when Paul says, you know what? I'm not going to sit down on my seat and talk to you to be some little mild man position. Yeah. Paul says, on this matter, I was still Peter to the face. Yeah. But yet, most people who, who so quick to judge when an apostle or a man or woman of God begins to contend by the Holy Spirit, you know, we must hold up now. Right. They're wrong. I got scripture. I'm not saying I'm gonna always take that take take that road, but but don't don't come so quickly to come at me if, if I find myself over in that place because I got somebody else who did it as well. Yeah, yeah. He was still to the face. That wasn't no really easy conversation. Right. That went down with some tension. Yes, and there are sometimes your crossing over gonna cause you to have to get up in somebody's face with the word of God and say, look here, we're not doing that like that. But I guess you'll never cross over. Mm -hmm. Turn away quickly to the book of Joshua. You should have read this um, for your homework on Sunday, Joshua chapter 5. Um, Holy Spirit, can we go there? Yes, Joshua chapter 5, verse 11. Real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. Somebody should be able to um, tell it to me because that must be part of your homework, but that's okay. We talked about this on Sunday. We, we talked about, we touched it very briefly about the manna needs to cease. Somebody said, the manna, the manna in, my in my life needs to cease. Needs to cease. Oh, God. I don't even think you understand what you just said. There comes a season in your life where God will demand the manna to cease. But guess what? It's up to you to make it cease. And let me help you out about, about the manna. A lot of folks don't realize where they are. I'm here to help you. There was a season in my life years ago when I did not possess a driver's license. I had no issue with, with, with getting people to come pick me up to take me to church or take me to work. I had no issue with that. There was a certain grace on my life for, for that. Where I was, I was saved through the Holy Spirit. I was, I was doing pretty good in the church. And so I had I, the people just, I was a choice to be around. They would say, they would say, man, um, that brother Charles, he's so, I love to be around because he's just so full of the spirit of God. He's full of joy. He, he may be going through, I mean, I was broke, busted in the sky, I was told up. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. But, but where I had nothing in areas of my weakness, God, was well, his grace covered me, it was strong in my life. So I had people that just constantly coming to me to, to bless me, constantly. But then so all of a sudden, that scripture came to light to me when, when Paul says to me, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And see, now you're looking at me crazy because you don't, you don't understand how God works. I just told you I was a good, perfect Christian. I was, I was, I was, I was living a good life and, and people loved to be around me. But the, but the scripture God used to give it to the other side was, was simply this. Shall you continue to charge in sin that my grace may abound? I said, no, I'm not sinning. He said, yes, you are. Okay. Oh, see, I'm a lost in church. He said, yes, you are. You are sinning because you are no longer now walking in faith. See, you didn't got so used to this grace that I provide for you, you won't even cross joy to get to the next level. You're so comfortable of, of, of these guys picking you up, making sure this, you won't even use your faith to get your behind over joy to a new place in your life where well, now you can pick the folk up, but you can be a better. And God said, no, I'm going to cry to you. He crossed his joy. I understand. Yes. And he used one simple scripture. Charge when you continue in sin. I said, hold up. I did an immediate Holy Ghost check. Sin? God, you know, who, who? Me sin? He said, yes, you. Because you won't walk in your faith. I said, God. I repent. And the moment I repent, it got ugly. Oh, you know, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. The moment I repent, 
the best one, right? Yes. It's, and we do see them eating that, that best one, right? right? But God said they didn't just eat the best one, they ate the fruit. Because what he wants us to understand is that, beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prosper. And then he said, Jesus said this, he said, Here is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. God is glorified when you bear fruit. And I thought I was doing something. Because I was the life of the church. Yeah. Praying in tongues and, yeah. and, 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 and got all the right answers. He bowed to you and shouted. And, 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 and God, said, God, said, God, said, God said, boy, if you sit another year, you're going to slap holy ooh out of you. Yes. 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 Come on. I want somebody to tell God, you know what, God? I want this man to stop. I need this man to stop today, right now. 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 Right in order for more fruit to come back, you got work to do. Yeah. You gotta plant some seed. Yeah. You gotta plant seed. You, you gotta go plant something now. Yes. And that's what most folk don't worry about. They, 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 as long as it's, it's there. Oh, bless God. Come on. But as soon as God's required of you, because He's given to you. And God, God, oh God, something, he's something, he's a terrible God. He says, too much is given. Too much is required. Don't you ever fix your mouth to think that God will give you something and don't require them of you. Don't right. you give that. Right. That is true, right. Amen. God is a just, balanced God. Yes, he is. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, in two places, we turn it here. It says that a false way is an, un, an abomination unto the Lord. Then it says that unjust way is an abomination to the Lord. Yes. Ain't no way God will just give you to, 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 to do all this right here right. and don't never require you to, to get to the next place in your life where you balance that thing back out. No, that's yeah. not who God is. That's, right. that's not his character. Mm -hmm. So if I'm at this place where I'm unbalanced, and I'm, I'm, I found myself as an abomination of because I love you. I'm saying, He said, Yeah, but I require something of you. Yeah. I require the next level in your life right now. Mm -hmm. You 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 asked him for it. I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Now walk in it. Yeah. Is this okay tonight? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 I, 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 oh God! Have your way, Lord. I briefly went over this on Sunday about how the, the captain of the host, the Lord's army, how he showed up because Joshua and I has come to a place where he's trying to see. He knows he's supposed to get Jericho. He knows yeah. God done told him Jericho is the first city you gonna get. He knows this. But the one thing I love about Joshua, mm -hmm. he don't just march up in and try to take it. Watching Jericho. He's patient with it. And all of a sudden, in his meditation of being patient with it, the captain of the Lord host shows up. But it's a strange conversation that takes place. Joshua said, because Joshua doesn't know who he is. Joshua, who are you? He don't know who he is. Right. And I told you on Sunday that just like Jesus was walking on the water. Yeah. They was in trouble. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how they were going to get to the other side. They was trying to go to the other side. But they didn't know how, because they didn't know how to beat that wind and that rain and that storm. They didn't know how to defeat it. Right. And so
And so here comes Jesus walking along. And the first thing he was panicked. But here Joshua says, hold up. I ain't never seen nothing like you right here before. Right. Who are you? Then he made up, it says he has a sword in his hand. Mm. He has a sword drawn over against Joshua. Mm -hmm. Joshua doesn't freak out. Mm -hmm. Joshua doesn't get to run. Mm -hmm. He simply asks the question, who are you? Are you for us or for the trouble we got to go fight? See, that's why I'm, I'm very careful to talk about when I'm going to apply for something, when I'm, when I'm building something. And I, I'm very careful to say the devil does. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Uh-uh, ain't always the devil. Right. Ain't always the devil. Ain't always evil working against me. Right. It could very well be the principality that, guess what? All principalities are not evil. Oh, God, right. I just met the church up. Oh, God, I just met the church up. Lord, you don't move, you don't, you don't, you don't mess with something that way. They're standing up there watching us. <laughs> saying, now, you can, I can give you access, or I can deny you access. Which one you want? Access. But you got to say the right thing. You also got to do the right thing. Yes. To get access. So he says, I, I'm not for either one of y'all. I'm for whoever understands how to get access. Sometimes you just gotta let patience have a perfect word. Sometimes. But in other times, you gotta go up in and, 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 and take it by force. Because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent taking it. Sometimes you got to, and you got to understand when you are met, have, have been met with the moment of opportunity and you're standing at a gate of complete access to glory. And you're sitting here freaking out because you don't understand what stand over you with a sword has the ability to fight for you or against you. And you don't call it the devil. You can call the devil. It's just, they're just sitting there waiting on you to say the right thing. For one, quit deeming your moments and places that you are in your life as unholy. Oh God, you're about to trade war right now, ready. I've come to learn. That just because I'm in a, on a on a on a raging storm, in a, in a raging storm on a rock, on a raging sea, that that might just be the holiest place I need to be. Because that was that was going to be the midst of a storm, but the storm was so holy, it drew Jesus' attention. Oh God, He can't walk into them because He said, "I must go and abide in this holy place." It's a storm, but it's a it's a holy place. See, you sitting here wondering and worrying about why is this happening? And Jesus is saying, baby, that's the, that's the holy place I, I created for us to get together in. Mm -hmm. I want us to, to get to know one another more than another. This, 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 this place right here is the holy of holies of your life right now. Amen. This place. Amen. This rocky place. Yes. This messy place. Yes. This place that has the ability and the capacity to drown in you. But it's the holy place.
The Holy of Holies, right? Yes. It amazes me that in the good book, the first chapter, the Bible describes the first Holy of Holies. It calls it a place of, 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 of gross darkness coming. Yes, yes. It calls it a place where, 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 where it was empty yes. and void. Yes. But the Spirit of God said, I can drown that hole.
Get out. So don't be afraid. Let me give you this thing now and walk with you guys together. But I need to force myself now on you. I need you to do what verse 21 says. Then they willingly received him, in, him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at the land where they went. Oh God, that just preaches somebody like that. When you quit fighting God and let him just get on in, you're going to turn around and say, my God, how long have we been here? Oh God. Wow. 
had one that was that was done in 2016, and I had to drive by and look at it every day. Cause I, I knew God told me to build something, but but I got I got I, I when, when it didn't happen, I got mad and upset with God. Right. And God said, "Son, these are holy grounds I have for you, wow. but you didn't understand they were holy grounds. Mm. Your lack of the ability to accomplish something or do something is your holy ground." Quit trying to figure out, but God, I can't do it. I don't know if you can do it. That's a holy place. Let me break something down to you all. I can give you countless places in the Bible that were holy places. One of them was this Moses, kill my people to turn towards the Red Sea. Yeah. Okay. Get to the Red Sea. You can't go nowhere. way. You look in the back, you see Pharaoh just top the hill. Yeah. He coming. And now chaos, chaos break out. Ah! No shut up! Ah! God said, this is a holy place. Mm-hmm. Moses, stop fussing at me and tell the people to stand still. See, in a holy place, it's always the same thing that happens. He says, stand still. Woo! Be still. Mm-hmm. Because when you're able to be still, you can see. All this right here. Ah! Sit still. Okay, God, how am I? Oh, God, you are holy. Man. God, I bless you. I thank you, Lord, God, that you, you are providing a way out for us, God. You've already given us. Lord, I just bless your name. Stay in the holy place. Wow. The holy place. When we lost the, when we lost our house back, back then, the Lord put me through a season. Now he let us leave. We he we wake up every morning. 4.30. And I would go to my holy place and just worship him. Worship him. I was complaining. I was just worshiping him. In that process, I got told by the Holy Ghost to go down to Orangeburg County DSS, put my family on food stamps for a season, and some medical. I did as a man. Went down there, got it, the pantry got full. And, and, and when the season was up for, for, for it, it, it to be over, I didn't cheat the system. I went down there and said, ma'am, we be good now. Amen. She turned it off. She said, well, you, you sure? So I said, yeah, we good. The Lord has provided for me now. Amen. Amen. Businesses began to blow up. Amen. At 27 years old. Wow. That was my holy place. In that, in that season. Mm-hmm. It was DSS assistance, yeah. but it was my holy place. Why? Because it was a place yeah. where shameful it shouldn't even dwell. Oh right. see, the, see, the Garden of Eden was a holy place. Yeah. Because the, the Bible said that they were naked and not ashamed yeah. until they became ashamed. Right. All they had to do was realize, hold up, we still need a holy place. Oh yes, yes, yes. Anytime you find yourself overcome with shame or guilt, don't run, baby. Don't try to cut it up. Don't try to hide. Invite me. I'm going to look like a clown on food of you, but when I didn't invite me, whoa, come at me. I'm going to have power to strike waters. And they're going to pop. Give me a deal. Amen. 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 Or trying to go do the next big thing and omit the holy place. Mm-hmm. You will look good in the eyes of some folk. Mm-hmm. Accomplish, let you accomplish something, God said, boy, you ain't never gonna form going on. Yes, My power ain't in that. Amen. My power ain't accompanying you. Yes. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you got a customer to the form of me. Yes. You, you, you know how to put this on. Yes. You, 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 you know exactly how to, how to, how to, how to, how to preach the word. But, but you ain't been in the Holy Spirit me in a long time. Because yeah, the Holy I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, if the Holy Spirit was such a such a, a common place, how come a preacher go in there with sin on the can't come out? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Let it out. Yeah. Cause it was a fight up in there. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a treacherous place. Push 
you talk to, you'll be there. Just cry out to you. Get on fire, you'll get burned. Hey, 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 hey. Holy place. Holy place. Holy place. You just, you, you, you see, you're so empty, you just, you just, ain't got nothing. It's a holy place. Amen. He, he, he dwells in places like that. His spirit is drawn to dead things. Oh, he doesn't, oh no, 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 make it holy ghost. Oh, God, help me, hold, help me now, Holy Ghost. The Bible says that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, will he not preach your mortal body? Huh? So, so guess what? He, 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 he's drawn to dead things. Oh, God. Oh, I the body. Jesus might have spoken the word, but I promise you, it was the word of the Holy Ghost that opened that tomb up. It was the word of the Holy Ghost that woke him up and brought him out of there. He's drawn to dead things. Mm. Oh, there, uh, there was a whole valley of there was a whole valley of the dead bones out there. Yes. The Bible says the Spirit of God moved. Oh. Yes. God help me. Yes. Amen. Kill me, Lord. Yes. The Spirit raised me back up. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the Spirit of God is drawn to dead things. Oh, oh yeah, you know why? Because we give His life. See, the Spirit of God can connect itself to anything they and bring it back to life. Anything! Yes, he can. The Holy Spirit's like, it's still death. Death? Man, don't wake up. Thank you, Jesus. We're about to get out of heaven clothes. In closing, you're going to go home and read this here. It's in, it's in the 2nd King chapter 2. The key to understanding how to receive from God in the holy place, you got to keep your eyes on it. you got to keep your eyes on it. you got to learn how to keep your eyes on it. Jesus says like this, whoever believes on me, you can have whatever you ask. You just believe on me. But Elisha was asked by his man of God, what you want from me? He said, well, don't push me no more. He said, well, it's a hard thing, but if you keep your eyes on me and see me, when I'm taken, you can have just that. You have it. And a lot of us go through all these motions and all these things. And just at the moment when it appears the thing we're waiting on the most has been taken away from us, we take our eyes off him. Yeah. And God said, Hold on, let me how it work. He said, you didn't see when I took it, I dropped something too? Oh, God. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. Oh. I lost a relationship that had funded that project. Amen. What? I didn't do nothing. Right. It just happened. Right. And I said, okay, God. He said, son, don't worry about what I took out of the way. Amen. You see what I dropped. Amen. I dropped the, the, the anointing Amen. to place, to take the place of what was taken. Amen. Pick up the mantle. Amen. And see, this was a mistake that, that, that way it wasn't too, too much of a mistake, but this mistake was what was made. Elisha comes to the Jordan and stops and looks at it for a little bit. But he don't stay there too long. The Bible says he take that mantle in his hand. <laughs> And strike the waters. Don't get stuck sitting there looking at it. You got the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Strike the waters. Get on cross Jordan. Because all those that picked at you on the way across Jordan the first time gonna praise you coming back across. No, that's what happened when you really used to see it. The praise 
report, you see, the, 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 the last report changed to a praise report. Real quick life. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is upon us. Not to scream and shout, kick and howl, make us get goosebumps, but it's here to empower us to get to the next level of our lives, to learn how to cross Jordan. And you don't just cross Jordan one time in your life. There are many, many different crossings of Jordans in your life that you're going to experience. There are many different um, types of uh, going to the other side you're going to experience. But you have to understand when the manna on that side of the Jordan, you got to stop eating it. Now I got to eat something different. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. He's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I want every person who's in a rough place right now, who's, who, who, and some of, some, somebody, some of you may not be in a rough place, but some of you may be in a place where you know God is, is calling you to a work, and, and you've been struggling with it. I want every time that thing to come to your mind about the rough place or, or the ministry call or whatever it is that you have deemed as a place of where you just get in your mind and worry and struggle with or something or you battle. I want you to take the, the devil out of the equation for a moment. Just take him and put him, get, get him, put him to the side. Remove him out of the equation. And I want you to begin from this moment on to begin to take your shoes off. And don't run from that place. And willingly invite God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, invite them in, invite them in. Let them come on in that boat with you. And watch how fast you get to the other side to where you're supposed to be going at. Watch. Your, yours may be struggling with something God told you to do. Just, okay, God, I receive the Spirit. The Spirit can help me do this thing, God. And I, I know I'm always talking about that fig tree. I love myself that fig tree. I love it. Because I have a true understanding of what happened. Amen. And I just pray that, that, that somebody one day will just get that same revelation and understanding. And I know when you get it. You know when you get it. Because you will stop looking like you got it. And you will actually have the fruit that you designed to have. And he'll put it on you. But you have to ask him. You have to ask him. See, let me help you with how God has conversations with you sometimes. So you can quit thinking that it's just your, your pastor, your mom, or your cousin, or your boss, or somebody talking to you. Whenever somebody comes to you about something they're asking you about, that, and it bothers you. Nine times out of ten, and the Holy Spirit talking to you about that mess, you need to just go stop with them. <laughs> I'm telling you, because at that point, only you and only you and the Holy Spirit know what's bothering you, right. or know what you're ashamed of. Right. The Bible says when Jesus was privately talking to Peter, asking him a simple question, Peter, love it thou me. Yeah, Lord. Peter, love it not me? Yeah, Lord. You know I do. Simon, love it not me? Come on, Lord, I told you, man. You know I love it. Ask me that. What the feed the lambs? Now, I don't know what your love not me is. But I know mine. Tom, you love me? Yeah, Lord, now look, put the crank on out. Come on, God. I ain't going to hell with Come on, I got Tom, yeah, Lord. You love me? I don't know what about that. I might have a food to drink today. Come on, my God. I ain't hurting nobody. Come on, talk. Put it down. Talk, talk, put it down. Man, God, I don't told you now. Oh, you done told me? Yeah. Come on, God. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. I'm going to take it from you now. But I got to a place where God said, okay, I'm going to dangle something in his face to show him what I got for him. 
Now, somebody just said, God will do that. That's a lie. Yes, he does. He told Moses to send the children of Israel to the promised land yes. so they can see how it is. Yes. They brought grapes and milk and honey back daily in the face of the people, and that wasn't good enough. Sometimes God will dangle stuff in your face to show you yes. this what I got for you. Yes. Yes. And you will, you will look at it, yes. you will eat it, you will taste it and say, I don't, I don't, I don't want that dog to go work over there. Mm -hmm. The giants over there. Right. He showed me the same one, the biggest child you ever had in your life. But I want you to do that at night. But God, I go to, I go to AA at night. And yeah. Yeah. You see? What keys? Here you go. Look, God, I go in that land, man. I, got, I don't want to drink no more. He said, well, son, mm -hmm. ask me to put food in there. Mm -hmm. I said, is that simple? He said, my spirit will do it for you. Mm -hmm. I said, well, God, put the food on me not to drink no more. Mm -hmm. So I can feed you whenever you come up to me. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I can, I can hire more people. Mm -hmm. I can be more responsible. I can grow into not just a man, but into a company, into an empire, into an executive, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put food on me. And he kept putting, he still put food on me all because I made one decision. Mm -hmm. To simply just ask him to put the food on me. Mm -hmm. He was asking me to give him something to eat. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, I can't feed all the people. I got to go take my liquor. Because mm -hmm. I'm not worried of this. I can't be on time. I, man, I got to get my sleep. Because yeah. I can't do that. I only want my, my, my one thing is to be because I can't get it from the people that I don't know how to talk. Right. Right. They won't understand me. Right. Right. But I learned, this, I learned to tell him, Lord, put the food on me. Yeah. Just put it on me. You ask him for something. He don't just play over here. Of mine ain't got much on me. And then I got for some grapes. I got a grape for God. Put the grapes over here.